Hebrew Kingdom building. All right, y'all. So, uh, Shermion Hadass about to bring out a word, Ms. Baka. Kind so hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody did the homework. Yeah? How, how we looking? You don't gotta raise your hand if you're ashamed. We did ours. We just finished it. Just finished it. We barely made it. And three days in a row was hard. It was hard, man. We, we was trying, though. We <laughs> get home, be tired. <laughs> Praise your Lord. Um, if you didn't finish it, I may encourage y'all to finish it. Because um, just to kind of explain it, that that really will tell you a lot about your marriage. Whether you can do it or not, it's going to tell you a lot about your marriage. If you can be exposed before one another, it's going to tell you a lot. If you can't, it's going to tell you a lot. If you have a hard time finding the time to do that, it's going to tell you a lot. So make sure that y'all pay attention to those things and uh, hopefully it was an enjoyable homework assignment because we're going to have some more coming up. We're going to do it again soon. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do that every week. That ain't the homework assignment though. That ain't the homework assignment. <laughs> Praise Yahuwah. So, um, so this is kind of what Yahuwah was kind of giving us. Uh, we're going to just kind of capitalize on that and then we're going to talk about really what it looks like to be a disciple. That's where we're going to go at the end of this thing. But go to Genesis <laughs> chapter 2. So last week, we talked about Genesis chapter 2, 3. Genesis chapter 3 and about not wearing fig leaves. And uh, if you had a hard time with that shower exercise, you got some fig leaves to talk about. You got some fig leaves to figure out. I get, I'm talking to everybody. If your husband ain't here, your, your wife ain't here, I'm talking to you too. That just ain't the married couples in here, right? Everybody. If you had a hard time doing it, you may have some fig leaves to figure out. Um, but we're going to go back one chapter. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Look at verse 21 and 22. So this has been coming out a lot about Yahuwah causing a deep sleep to fall on the dom. Genesis 2, 21. I'm going to read it. And Yahuwah caused a deep sleep to fall on the dom, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. So Moray talked about this. I believe the Chiefs brought this out, too. I don't remember which one. Chief Musha. Okay. Yeah, he talked about how a people get called out of, out of a people. Uh, Moray has been talking about how the people get caught out of a people. But verse 22, we're going to talk about what that looks like. What does it look like to be a people that got caught out of a people? Uh, how does it relate to your marriage? How does it relate to your relationship with your whore? Verse 22. Then the real which Yahuwah Elua had taken from man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. What is that telling us? That means that your Isha is going to be a reflection of what's inside of you. Think about that. He took a rib out of Adam and created this woman. Your Isha is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. Maury brought this out recently. He said it really quickly though, so I don't know if everybody caught it because he just dropped that. He just kind of sprinkled it in the message and moved on. But I'm going to rewind it because he talked about Ish and how that word is related to fire. And then Isha, how that word is related to smoke. Anytime you see a fire, you're going to see a smoke. Regular fire, like, you know, natural fire. When you see fire, you're going to see smoke rising up. That's why you'll see that you're going to have a lot of character. Your, your each child going to have a lot of characteristics that you have. If you've been angry, walking around mad at home, guess what she's going to be doing with your children? She's going to be angry and walking around mad. If you're joyful, she's going to be joyful. If you if you sad, don't be surprised when eventually she starts to look sad. Because she's going to be a reflection of what's going on inside of you. Because that's your real that was taken out of you. All right, marriage talk. What does this have to do with us? So, it's the same way for us in Yahushua. It's the same way. I'm going to prove it to you. Go to Leviticus 4.32. We just, I'm just read off yours, so I don't have to 
over this taboo. So here's the question I want you to think about. What are you reflecting in your marriage? To the single people, I'm talking about your marriage to Yahusha. What are you reflecting? What are you looking like? And when I say single, I mean like you don't have no spouse. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the jungle and all the daughters. That's what I'm talking about when I say single. Because it still applies to you, Akio, who, uh, who husband's not here. It's applied to you still. It still fit. Yo, each time not here, it apply to you still. And some of those who aren't there. And the other and the adults that aren't there. How are you? Okay. It's okay, I don't have to follow. <laughs> The question is, what are you reflecting in your marriage? What are you reflecting in your marriage? And if you're not married, I'm talking about your marriage to Yahusha. Your marriage to Yahusha. So this is Leviticus 4.32. It reads, if he brings a lamb as a sin offering. I don't have to go through this because this I know we go through the tour every year. This tour universe, everybody knows what this is talking about. Right? So if he brings a lamb as a sin offering, he should bring a female without blemish. He should bring a female without blemish. Now we know roughly this is Yahusha, right? Now, so what so what we're saying is that Yahusha was without blemish, right? Do we agree? Or are we not sure? It don't sound like we're sure. Okay. Well I'll let you know. Yahusha was without blemish. Now we also know Yahusha has a bride. Let's skip over. We're gonna go, we're gonna run through these. Ephesians 5. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Anybody remember what our marriage scripture was last week? I wasn't here. God. You remember it? Love your wife as a what scripture is that? That's Ephesians 5, 24 through 26. Ephesians 5, 23 through 26. 23 through 26. Ephesians 5, 23 through 26. God, 23 through 26. All right, so we just confessed with our mouth that Yahushua was a lamb without blemish. And we also talked about how the Isha is a reflection of the Ish. 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 All right. And we know Yahushua has an Isha. All right, Isha. Let's look at what it says. This is Ephesians 5, <laughs> verse. I'll start it. Let's just read it. Let's go from 23. Let's just read our whole scripture. For the husband is the head of the Isha, as also Messiah is the head of the assembly, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the assembly is subject to Messiah, so let the wives be subject, sub subject to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Messiah also loved the assembly and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. Verse 27. That he might present her to himself a Kodesh assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she should be Kodesh without this is what it means when we're talking about how the Isha is a reflection of the Ish our Ish, our bridegroom was without blemish therefore we have to be without Revelation 7 Revelation 7, let's look at verse 9 through 13. We're going to see something very, very similar. And behold, y'all can just take a note because I'm going to speed through it, okay? Because I know that sleep demon be jumping up on people. So we're going we gonna to fight him off. After these things I looked and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the Lamb, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, 
clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our Lord, who sits on the throne into the Lamb. All the Malachim stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped Elua, saying, Amin, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to Elua forever and ever. Amin. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? So that white robe is talking about being without blemish. These are, these are, this is what is required to be the Isha to Yahusha. To be the bride to Yahusha. We're talking to, we're kind of talking on both sides of the coin to the married people. Your Isha is going to be a reflection of who you are on the inside. She came from inside of you. She came as your rib, so she's going to be a reflection on what's inside of you. If she can't make her mind up and she's always confused, guess what? There's somewhere inside of you. If she insecure, guess what? That's somewhere inside of you. But there's hope in this. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. Stay with me. So, there's hope. Hallelujah. So how do we get to the point to where we're without spot and without blemish? I'll give you the answer, because again, I know that sleep demon coming for some of y'all. I see it all in your eyes. That's okay, though. Here's the answer. Discipleship. Discipleship. This is how we get to the point to where we are without blemish. It's through discipleship. Go to Matthew 28. You all right? You all right? Y'all, <laughs> y'all post these. I'm taking notes. Oh, we got some notes coming. Praise your name. Hadassah says she can post them too. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20. I feel like I'm going fast. Let me back up. I'm going to just, just walk down it. I'm going to walk down it. What do we look at? So what we saw was that Kawa, Eve, was taken from inside of Adam. And what that's showing us is that your Isha is going to be a reflection of what's inside of you. Okay? Huh? What's the evidence for that? Yahusha was a lamb without blemish. He's coming back for an assembly without blemish. We went to Kazayon and we saw the future and we saw where it was written. Hey, they're going to have on white rolls. Notice that they ain't have like no barbecue sauce pills or ketchup or nothing like that. They was without blemish. This is the bride of Yahusha. So how do we get to the point to where we can be without blemish? And the answer to that is discipleship. But now we got to talk about what that looks like. Because there's a difference between being a parrot and being a disciple. Listen, listen. There's a difference between being a parrot, P-A-R-R-O-T, and this, uh, being a disciple. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. That's what we're going to look at. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. So this is after Yahusha has resurrected. Okay? He's given some instructions to his Talmudim, which means taught ones are disciples. Starting at verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Ruach HaKadosh, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Stop. All right. So, verse 20 is what we're going to look at. It says that your job is to teach them to observe all things I have commanded. This is very, very difficult to do. So let's talk about the parrot first, right? Um, it is very interesting because Maury has us meditating on the Torah. The last three years, we read through the Torah. We, got the, we, can, we can quote the Torah. That's what a parrot can do, though. You can talk around a parrot, and then he'll start saying everything that you say. But does that mean that that parrot is the disciple of you? No. Nah. Nah. Does that mean that the parrot understands how to observe the Torah? 
No? Y'all ain't never seen no, no parrot doing nothing in the Torah? Like not eating pork? Y'all ain't never seen that? But he might be able to say, don't eat pork. There's a difference between a parrot and a disciple. Let's bring it down. Let's bring it to the earth. And then we'll try and get the Ruach concept. So in your marriage, there's a difference between being a parrot and being a spouse. Because my, my Isha can say the things that I say. She can say that. She can do it. She can say those things. But there's a difference when it comes to doing it. So when Yahushua says, teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. When you kind of trace that Greek word observe back. And you, it's, it's like teros in Greek. But when you trace it back to the Hebrew, the word is shamar. Shamar. That word means not just guard. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it can be a violent word. It means to take custody of something. Like to take it, to, to grab it and make it your own. So what Yahushua is saying, he's saying, teach them to shamar all that I have commanded you. How do you do that though? In order to do that, you have to teach somebody to see the way you see. You have to teach somebody to hear the way you hear and to think the way that you think. That's the short answer. When you want to make a disciple of somebody, you have to teach them not just to say what you say, but to see what you see, hear what you hear, and think how you think. Anybody, how, how do we do that? I'm gonna just open it up. How, how do we, what, are your, what are your thoughts on how we teach somebody to hear what you hear, see what you see, and think what you think? Uh. I think the best way is experience and having the having conversations and uh, really when 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 experiences arouse having discussions and conversations about the how you see things and how you think and the, you know to each other. That's it. Uh, That's it. It takes experience. Discipleship is something that takes experience. Here's the, here's the earthly thing. In your marriage, Roshim, Adonim, right? Heads and, and masters. That's what the scripture calls you, husbands. In your marriage, I want you to think, how well are you doing discipling your wife? How well are you doing discipling your wife? Wives, how well are you doing at being discipled? Can you come and sit at your husband's feet and learn of him? Before I, so I, I heard it. I, I don't know who it was, but somebody said, no, because he don't know nothing. I heard you. It, may, it probably wasn't in this room, though. It was probably somebody else. But I can hear it really far, you know? It's probably somebody else. Um, that's not true. Your husband knows things because your wife placed him there. Your wife would not call him to be a husband and not equip him to be a husband. Right? Same thing, husbands. You'd be like, man, she, she don't listen to nobody. Nope. It might be the way you're saying it. Because women, women, she moves against it is. But women, they, they hear words, but they hear tone. They hear effect. They hear, is he raising his voice or lowering his voice? Um, uh, Maury uh, Yosef told me this one time. He said, um, I hope I get the right word. But women are uh, thermometers. Has to wear. No. The man what is it? Which is the one that tells you what the temp like? It can pick up on the temperature swings. Which one is that? Thermostat. Thermostat. Told you, but women are thermostats. And he was saying, <clears throat> which one? Thermostat changes it. Okay, let's use a different word. So women are the ones that can pick up on the temperature in the house. They're gonna give you the temperature back. I don't know which one it is, but I go in my hallway, I look at the little device on the wall, and it says it's 74 degrees. Y'all don't know either. Y'all saying it, y'all. <laughs> but y'all know which one I'm talking about, right, Jewel? Well, there, there's a difference. The okay. there's, a, there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. So the thermostat changes the temperature in the location. The men are the thermostats. The women are the thermometers. Maury uh, Yosef, forgive me. I was listening when he was talking. Uh, but he was saying that sometimes 
your wife is is going to be able to detect a change in temperature, but she might not know how many degrees. She might not know. She might be like, "You upset," and you know, in our mind, we be like, "No, nah, I'm not mad. I'm just I'm I'm passionate." But she gonna pick up that there's something there. My point in bringing this up is that women are gonna hear tone. Men, we gonna hear words, which is why when we get together at Jungle or King's Table or something like that, we just talk very straight, and everybody, nobody walk away offended. <laughs> but with your wife, she not she not your she not your homeboy, right? She's not your ox. She's your isha. So it takes controlling your tone. Why are we talking about all this? Okay. If you think that your wife can't be discipled, I'm saying check your tone. Check the way that you're saying it and the timing in which you're saying it. If she having a bad day, it's not the right time to correct her on something she just did. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Or is it just me? I think it's just you. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I'll be doing that too. It's just, it's just us. For sure. Um, so, back to discipleship. It looks like, like Michael Yahoo said, spending time, intentional time with somebody. That's the way that you teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. That's how you begin to make your Isha in the image of you, Roshim heads. That's how you do it. It takes time, intentional time, sitting and talking. That's a hint. That's what your homework going to be around, but we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, by Esther actually saw that. She said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. So that's it. All right, so speaking on disciples, I have a couple of more scriptures to look at um, that really show you how to be disciples and show what that looks like. So John 13, starting in verse 34. All right, and it reads, a new, a new commandment I give to you, this is Yahushua speaking, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. But what does it look like to have love for one another? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 13. John 13, 34 through 35. In 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass, or a clanging cymbal, or a parrot. I just added that part. I'll start over. 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 1. Though I speak, with the tongues of men and of angels and of Malachim, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal, or as I would put it, a parrot. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. My parent. Love suffers long. Oh, so this is what love does. So um, if you have a disciple, our king, this is what it looks like. Love suffers long. And it's kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And then it goes on to say that love never fails. So this shows you what it looks like, what that discipleship relationship should look like. Yeah. 
So a disciple or a parent. Disciple or a parent. The um this really goes back to the word a dome. A dome. Who, who knows what a dome means? Master. Master. It's Aleph Dalit Nuno. A dome. And really what that it goes back to the strong leader's door of continuation. Or the strong leader's door to eternity. When you call somebody a dome, you're yoking yourself to that person because you're saying they're going to lead me to life. There's no a dome. No no total dome takes people and destroys them. Then I don't think there's any husband in here that is called a dome who wants to destroy their wife. Now on the other side of that, when you call somebody a dome be, which means what? My master. So it's the same thing, but when you put the yod at the end of that word, like you said, it means mine. It's a possessive word, but you're also saying, I'm the work of you. When it says that Sarah called Abraham, well, actually, I think that word is all there. But <clears throat> Adoni, when you look at that word, when you say, he's, my husband is my master, that means that you are the work of his hands. That's what the yod at the end means. The yod represents a hand, and it can represent to, to work. That means you are the work of the strong leader's door of continuation. You understand what I'm saying? So, with that being said, uh, okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all the homework here. Don't worry, singles, I got you. Oh wait, before I get to the homework, before I get to the homework, let me talk about how this relates to Yahusha. So when I say that Yahusha is my Adoni, my master, he's Adoni. That means that I must become the work of his hands. How? By sitting at his feet and learning of him and being disciple of him. Not just being a parent. Not just saying, oh, I know the commandments. Oh, I read the Torah portion. But meditating on the Torah portion. That's what it looks like to sit at the feet of Yahushua, which is it's so wild that more has been saying, hey, meditate on the Torah portion. Meditate on the Torah portion. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, Moray, it may, this is my opinion, but it may have something to do with why you would switch the way we're doing the tour portion. You notice for the past, what, three, four weeks, he had to ask us to raise our hand to see who read it? Because it's not about reading it, it's not about parenting it anymore. It's about becoming a disciple of the Torah. Can you sit and meditate on the Torah now? That's how you become the disciple of Yahusha. That's how, to go back, that's how you become a bride to Yahusha without blemish. By meditating on the Torah. David said, I meditate on the Torah day and night. I meditate on the Torah day and night. And then in response, Yahuwah said, Dawood is a man after my own. Is your Isha a woman after your own heart? Men, are you are you a are you a man after Yahuwah's own heart? Can you meditate on the Torah? Singles, we'll start with you this week. That's what your homework is. Meditate on the Torah. I know not everybody's doing it. Every day, hallelujah, ma, hallelujah. Every day, meditate on the Torah. Find the Blue Letter Bible app, which a lot of y'all use. It has an audio function. You can play a chapter of the Torah and meditate on it. It won't take you no longer. Well, let's see, these chapters come now. It shouldn't take you no longer than about four or five minutes for that portion. Singles, your homework is to meditate on the Torah every day this week. But you'll say, but it's only like three or four chapters. I'm going to run out. Well, you can do those chapters again. You can do that again. Um, married people, here's your homework. Y'all need to be doing that, but I'm, your homework going to look a little different. Your homework is going to be um, to study Elijah and Elisha. So, <laughs> study Elijah and Elisha, men. Study Elijah and Elisha. It's not, a very, it's not very long. I think they're only together in about three or four chapters of uh, First Kings. Study Elijah and Elisha and then disciple your Isha on your learnings. But the way you're going to disciple her is not like this. You're not going to sit here and talk like this. Move your chair. You're going to sit. Single people. And I told you. And I 
told you last week, you better not be doing no shower on work. You better not be doing this either, unless it's with your hood. So, that means you're going to turn your TV off. You're going to turn your phone off. And what you're going to do is you're going to sit and have a conversation about Elijah and Elisha. And you're going to teach her what you have learned. But my husband's not going to read it. What do I do? Well, you're going to read about Elijah and Elisha. And you're going to crawl up in that bed, sit in your husband's lap. Honey, guess what I read today? Now, I don't want to call nobody out, but I want to make sure that everybody hear me whose husband's not here. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to call nobody out, though. You know, we don't like being called out. Even though you're Usher, man. So your homework, right, is to do this. If your husband's not here, your homework is to read about Elijah and Elisha, and you're going to crawl in his lap or wherever it's going to be, and you're going to say, this is what I learned about Elijah and Elisha today. Come on. Okay. All right. Same thing for you men. If your wife is here, you're going to do this right here. It's face-to-face -face intentional time. This is what discipleship looks like. If you have a hard time doing this, then you're going to have to remove some fig leaves. It's designed to stretch you a bit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Also, for the for the women who are going to share this with their uh, husbands, a great question would ask. A great question to ask would be, "What do you think?" So ask him what he thinks about it, so that he has the opportunity to share with you. So it's not like you are, um, what's the word? It's not like you're trying to like. What'd you say? Yeah, like talking at him, you know, ask him what he thinks about it, like invite him into the conversation. So let's just recap. This we're gonna run down real quick, two minutes. So we talked about bear sheet two two twenty one, where Yahuwah took a rib out of a dom and said, This is your bride, this is your wife. That's because your wife is gonna be a reflection of what's inside of her. We gave the proof that we're a reflection of what's inside Yahusha. Yahushua was a lamb without blemish. He said, I'm coming back for an assembly without blemish. We went to Revelation. We saw the white robes. We saw the proof. They had no blemish on them. From there, we talked about parenting versus discipleship. How do we get to the point to where we have no blemish? You have to stop being a parent and become a disciple. Stop. And I'm not saying nobody here doing this, but don't just read it. Begin to meditate on it. Begin to think on it. Get it inside of you and sit at the feet of Yosha and learn it. Then we cover the homework. You're going to have intentional face-to-face -face time. No children, no cell phone, no laptop, no TV. You Men, you're going to have intentional face-to-face -face time. You're going to look at your wife in her eyes. After you study Elijah and Elijah, you're going to say, this is what it looks like to be a disciple. And then you're going to ask questions. How do you feel like I'm discipling you? Make sure you... So I don't see no men with pens. So Akio, I need y'all to write this down. For the men without pens. The question is, how am I? <laughs> he got that. <laughs> the question is, how am I doing discipling you? Nashim, wives, you can ask, how am I doing being discipled? See, what happens is having contact like this. It's very hard to argue like this. It's extremely hard to argue like this. One, because you're in striking distance, right? <laughs> Two, because physical contact tends to disarm conversations. It really does. So this is how you're gonna do it now. If, you're, if your spouse not in the truth, you're probably not gonna get that question back, but just tell them the answer to the question as if they had asked you. Any questions? Oh wait, before I get questions. Maury, did you have anything? Yeah, it's powerful. Um, is there anybody who was not on a Mishpaka call? Who was not on a Mishpaka call? Okay, we got two. Anybody else? Three. You wasn't on a Mishpaka call, Zuri? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, anybody other than uh, Jungle and DOL? Any of the adults? So it's just them two. Three. Who's number three? 
Who number three? Oh, no, keep it, no, no. So, I say that, I'll uh, bring that up because, um, and I'll get, I'll get the recording to y'all too, but, um, I really, um, pretty convinced that that's where we at. Um, I'm meditating on a tour right now. We're past that stage of just reading it and not really retaining much. Um, we can all raise our hands and say we read the Torah portion. And that's told, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a very, that's very important, there's a very important aspect to that. But now it's time to move and do what the kings did, and they meditated on the Torah day and night. So it's just a transition, and what that does is that gets the Torah in you. That's what really gets it in you to where it's a part of you. So, um, just do the things we talked about in the Mishpaka meeting, y'all. And um, do it consistently and you'll start, you start getting good, you start getting better and better at it. It'll become a habit. And before you know it, it'll become you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shemya. Remember the question that I had. <laughs> I'm trying to play back in my mind uh, the question that I had. It was about the homework assignment. Um, if we, oh, so the women, do we read about Elijah and Elisha too, or do we just wait for our Ishas to read and then they tell us, they teach us and tell us what we learn? Hadassah was saying, let them tell you what, let them tell you what they learned and then go back and read it later. Do we have a discussion again after we read it or are we just done? Sure. Ask you. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. Sure. Um, I have a comment to So, this is actually very interesting because just this past week, um, Nakiyahu and I, I don't know that. So, <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's not bad. It's actually really, it's actually really good. So just this last week, um, we were on the phone and we were talking, and uh, I was like, you know, I think we should like kind of like midrash marriage from the Bible, from the Bible perspective, like you know. So Malkiahu, he was like. Well, the whole Bible is about marriage, and I was like, well, it is, so, you know, let's, let's admit it, actually, and find out, you know, look into it about marriage, like, you know, where where am I, and I can see where I'm coming up short, or where you think I'm coming up short, and vice versa, and we can work this thing out around, and to, to help our marriage, to um, make our marriage the way that Yahuwah wants it to be, that he set it up to be. So, we actually kind of didn't. Yeah, we came to a conclusion, I guess. I just agreed with him on how to do it. And then that same night, we end up having to do that. <laughs> because um, he wanted me to see something the way he, he saw it, but I didn't feel like it was necessary because I wasn't breaking Torah and I should be able to see it the way I see it, you know? <laughs> um, but then we went into Exodus 21. 
about the woman being humbled, having a, you know, cutting off her hair, and then it was Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 21. Um, we went into that and we met rashed on that, and then I was like, okay. <laughs> but but it, was, it was actually very good for us. Yeah, and so now I'm learning to do that, and the main, the big thing that I learned from that is um, and, and going with what you all were saying about um, being a disciple is in order to be a disciple you have to be humble so he can disciple you all day but if you're not humble it's not gonna work God, let me just add a little color to it because <laughs> well, no, no, I'm, I'm just gonna add a little you know what was very interesting about it I'm gonna say is uh, um, about the Deuteronomy 21, it, it had to do with, you know, about kind of the verse where it talks about mourning your mother and your father. And it was a situation where she was like, well, I was raised up this way, and this is how my family did it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't how I do it. That's not how we're going to do it here. <laughs> So that, that's, that verse really reminded me, that's part of that, you know. When when you come together, and it, you know, the Isha, you, you're leaving your, I mean, we both leaving our mother and fathers, but like, when you're coming into a marriage, it don't matter what you I was doing before with your, with, your, with, your, with your mother and father. Once you come together, you, you got to kind of agree on the direction of moving it. That's just be that. I thought that was kind how we talked about that today. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's plenty. yeah, we got some big leaves that we got to work out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's powerful. Um, also, I just want to say one more thing. When you are having the discussion questions and you're asking the questions, how am I doing, discipling you? How am I doing being a disciple? Make sure that you, you keep an open mind, um, that you don't argue, that you don't interrupt one another, that you listen to what they have to say. Um, because sometimes your spouse can, I think Chief Musha was talking about this, sometimes your spouse can see things that you don't see. Um, just because of, he talked about the position of the husband and wife and how like with the Ezer, how she is, uh, she's not like side by side. She's how we were just before, you know, like in front of you. So that means that she can see things that are coming upon you, things that are trying to get at you and vice versa. So you have to really keep an open mind and an open ear when your spouse is talking because they may see something that you don't see. So that, that takes humbling yourself, you know, for both of you to do so. When you can do that, it really, it really gives you an opportunity for you to grow. Um, yeah. So just make sure you keep an open mind, open ears as you're talking, and listen to them. Don't listen to respond, but just really listen to listen to understand. Kind of makes sense, cause see, Rayabon was not humble, and the people came to him. His, the people he was supposed to be a don over came to him and he did not receive what they said. So he lost the kingdom and it split in two. Same thing Shimmy y'all brought up for the wise perspective. You have to be humble, pare your nails, cut your hair, and sit and listen. So when they give you the answer, it's gonna be honest, don't sit there and argue with it. You don't feel that way. That's not true. Don't do that. Just listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's some homework to do. I got a mic over there. I have a question. So I, I love tomorrow. My issue is going overseas, right? So how would I how I could do the singles homework? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you said for me to do the homework that the married people are doing, even with my ish not being here. So then am I discipling? 
How would I be disciple too if I'm the one that's bringing up the conversation? <laughs> so, um, so you you can be a um, disciple of your ease without him being a super scriptural, scripturally versed person. So it's about um, him leading the household. It's about um, a mindset. It's about going in the same direction with regard to leading the children and so on and so forth. Again, as long as it's not going against the most high, of course, you're not going, if you want to stuff the children with pork chops and stuff like that, you're not going to be okay with that, right? But I'm saying, like, like you want to, as long as it don't go against the most high, um, it's adopting this mindset as being, that's, that's a part of submission, that's why it, it said that you got to be humble, and it's very, very, it's even, it's going it's to be even harder for you to be humble when you know Torah, when you have, when you, you know, a daughter of Yahuwah, and he's not moving in that. And, um, I forget the most I still want to require it of you, though, so that's just the order he set up. So you got to find uh, that place where you can be discipled by him. Are you going to be able to be discipled by him in the scriptures? No. So you got to find that place. You know what I'm saying? Because um, that's going to be significant. If he feels like, if y'all are in one accord in that regard, that'll go miles. A little while to get married in your relationship. Because he will, he'll feel like he's being the East. He'll feel like, you know what I'm saying? You'll be empowering him to lead better. Um, and so the last thing you, you want, and I know you, no one will ever do this on purpose, right? No one will ever do this intentionally. But what I can tell you, Unintentionally, it can creep in that he'll think that you think he's lifting because he don't know scripture, or he'll he'll think that you think he's less than because he don't come to the assembly, he don't know scripture, he don't know the Most High like you. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, he knows that you know the Most High. You don't gotta show him that. You don't gotta do that. He knows. He knows the time you spend, you know, to try to serve Yahuwah. Um, now, but what you want, what you want him to know is that you are a disciple of him, as his, as his wife, as his Isha. That's what's going to be harder for him to know. He knows you know scripture. So, what I would say for you to do is to, um, it's not about. You get him to um, disciple you in Torah, but you can bring up. Cause one thing I know about Shemal, he's not crazy. He knows the scriptures is real. He, it's not like he thinks it's like fake or something like that. Um, yeah, cause even when we went to Florida on a trip, like he let his family know, like we don't eat these stuff. We ain't spending no money on the Shabbat. You probably go to the beach or something, but this is not happening. So like he let them know straight up like what what time it was. So I didn't even have to do anything. I just sat back like ooh. <laughs> That's huge. That's huge. So I'll say this last thing. I'll say this last thing. So what you do is. You use the scriptures just as a conversation driver. That's it. That's it. You ain't looking for him to disciple you in no Torah, no Torah. You ain't no Torah scholar, but you use it as a conversation driver so y'all can get into that. Hallelujah. So, so your question might be different. Like normally, you know, I think the, the wives are asking how how Torah of the job am I doing being discipled of you. Yours might just be like, hey, how am I doing as your wife? Because regardless of he know Torah or not, he can answer that. He's going to be able to answer that. <laughs> yeah, you, you as an Isha have the ability 
to empower your husband to lead. I think we we kind of we kind of miss that. Like you have the ability to empower your husband to lead. Um, it's gonna take humility on your part, but you have that power. You have the ability to empower him. You have the ability to. Um, it's First Peter three. My phone just died, but. Um, First Peter 3 talks about um, submitting yourself to your ego. Um, yeah. yeah, First Peter 3, 1. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives. You know, we talk about this before. So what does that look like, right? So you know, you know, you know how to talk to him, you know. Like you have the ability to be able to, to make him feel like he's a leader, you know. You have that power. But that takes, that takes humility on your part. So it's not so much about how much you know. Um, and I'll share this, a lot of people don't know, like if you were to guess which one of us went to seminary, who would you guess? Oh, never mind. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it takes, <laughs> it's not just so much about what you know, it's about, um, Taking that, taking that and bringing it into submission under your each. Um, yeah, so you have the you have the ability to empower him to lead. But yeah, you know you know how to talk to him so that he feels like okay. You know. You know, um, had some good things happen with my age, and I had told him that, you know, I'm going to start talking to you, like when I'm given the Elohim punishment, I'm, you know, I'm, we're going to discuss it and da 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 da. And something transpired this week, which I just be moving. I thought I was doing a good thing when I handed out a punishment um, because in my head, I'm moving like, you know, I don't even want him to have to deal with what he had been dealing with. So I'm I'm going to give out a punishment this time. I'm going to stick to it. And he was like, oh, it caught me off guard because he was like, hey, I thought, I thought you said that you were going to talk to me. I thought we was gonna discuss punishments together, and I was like, "So you listen to me?" No, but it really didn't catch me off guard. <laughs> he was listening to me. I messed up. Like, I have to correct it. I'm gonna fix it, y'all. I'm gonna fix it. But you know, what y'all are saying, it it does make sense. You know, and I don't want to go backwards for sure, you know. Um, so that just shows me that, yeah, it made him feel some type of way and he was expecting, he was looking forward to something and, you know, that's part of too, probably my probably unconscious rebellion. But um, I'm being made aware of things. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the old man. Oh, so I'll say this with you. Um, when you say that moving forward, I'm gonna do this, and moving forward, I'm gonna do that. 
to your east. Uh, it's very important that you do your best to do that because after a couple of times, you don't want him to, to <coughs> just not take your word seriously. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's better just to make sure you're ready to do that before proclaim it with your mouth to him. The best thing to do is just to start doing it, really. That's the best thing to do. Um, just start doing it. Just whenever you got to do a punishment. I'm just saying for like in the future or something because you already told him. But what I would have done is just start letting him know every time before you do a punishment. So every time, no, no, no. Don't, don't make no proclamation. See, this is what happens. This is why I'm saying that. When you make the declaration, the testing comes and it makes it a lot harder to do it as opposed to when you just make it up in, inside and then you just act on it. It's a lot easier to do it. I don't know, it's just like that. When you make them declarations with your mouth, everything tries to stop you from doing it. But when you just do it, it's just like fasting, for example. Try to uh, tell everybody, yep, tomorrow I'm going to do a seven day fast. Tomorrow, everybody, let me make an announcement. We're gonna do a seven day fast. Oh my, next day. Oh, that's gonna be hard to do. Everything gonna be trying to keep you from doing it as opposed to you barely tell anybody and then you just you just fast. And then maybe day three or four people say, Oh, you fast? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, that's just a little something. You just, you just moving. I'm just saying that's just just moving forward. It's a lot better way to do those types of things. Um, and what will happen, you'll just start doing those things and you should just be like, oh, I like this. Okay, you let me know every time you do. Okay, all right. Oh, you know, I'm just doing a little something, you know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just you know. But I will. You <laughs> All right, so uh, with that, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is a total blessing, man. I'm really enjoying this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Really good. Thanks for bringing this out, man. Uh, you know, in the military, we, uh, we would call this on the job training, you know, being a disciple. You know, this, this is a good uh, way to do uh, some on the job training as to how to be a disciple. But I have a question, man. My wife, I, I try to disciple my wife sometimes, you know, try to bring the lessons back on that, you know, we've been taught in the assembly. And lots of times we end up getting, getting, you know, getting into an argument because she tells me, well, I know that, I know that, I know that. And it's like, she's undecipherable, you know, you know. I'm not going to be trying to, I'll be trying to disciple her and she ain't feeling it, you know. So I end up getting, getting a bit, you know, and I said, okay, you know. But she's she got a lot of faith, you know, in her. You know, a pastor, you know, at the church, you know, she she got, you know, she tell me, well, we talk about the same thing, we talk about the same thing, you know. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, dog chasing his tail, you know, I try to disciple her, but uh, y'all have any uh, suggestions on how to handle that situation? Pray on it, pray on it. Uh, definitely pray on it, but, but, but you know, uh, one of the things to remember, is, you know, is that um, it says teach them to observe. Teach them to observe all that I command you. And sometimes what can happen is we can teach them to do it. But that's not the same as teaching them to observe it. To teach, like I can teach my children to do things. But the way that they learn, like I don't know if y'all seen little David. I don't know where he at. He probably sleeps He's like, <laughs> See, he had to observe me doing that. Right? Like, I, like you can't. That's pretty cool. You, you really can't teach your children how to go to sleep. But they have to, in a way, observe you doing it. Like he'll come lay by me on the bed and he'll fall asleep. That's because I've taught him through observation. Uh, so with, with, your, with your wife, that's going to be tough. Because what you don't want to do is go home with a lesson and just drill the lesson in. No, this is what this means. This is how we do this. This is how we do this. That's not teaching them to observe, because remember, when you're teaching someone to observe, you have to teach them how to think like you, how to hear like you, and how to see like you. 
how to do that just takes time. Come with me as we go on a walk. Man, this keeps coming up. Praise the Lord. Uh, but it says, uh, talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. That's the way to disciple. These are natural conversations that we have. And hey, you know, honey, I was thinking about doing this. What you think about that? You don't necessarily have to say, oh, well, the scriptures say this, that, and the other. Just say, hey, I think we should go this way. Hey, I'm going to go for a walk. Why don't you come for a walk with me? I'm going to go work, work, work in the garden. The doctor cuts the grass with me sometimes. Uh, and it's just those moments where you really begin to disciple. So I guess the long way of answering that, here's the, that, that here's the short way of answering is, uh, there's a difference between teaching somebody to do something and teaching somebody to observe something. And it may be that you just have to, you know, do your best to just spend more time in a natural environment. If she cooking, go cook with her. Just have conversations versus, hey, I just got home from Shabbat. This is what we're about to learn. Bible study time. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just, hey, she in there cooking chicken, go in there and, and, and I don't know, season the meat or something. Or just go sit down and watch her cook and have conversation. Like Nagayawi was saying, it's that, it's that time that, that you begin to disciple. Because again, uh, speak of them when you walk in your house, when you wait, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. That's how you teach somebody to observe something versus teaching them just to do it. <laughs> yeah, um, so Elder, um, you remember when I sent you a message a few days ago? Oh, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> but I had sent you a, a text about a, a few days ago. Um, and so uh, what I would say, Elder, is that um, the best thing in your specific situation, this is not every situation, though, but your situation is different. Um, you know, y'all been married for longer than most people have been, been on earth in the trial. Or a lot of people been, I think most people in the trial. Uh, and so, yeah. Yeah, so, so um, and y'all always, y'all been in the church you came in the truth maybe what four years ago or something see what i'm saying so you gotta move uh you gotta move very patiently and with a different level of grace with her um i would actually really with a, 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 a told way to on your end to do is to actually let her talk to you about the scriptures and then you expound based on what she learned. Try to cause the good thing about see you you have, you have been told he shot man. Uh, most guys showed me some stuff man. Um, so I would just uh, I would get her <laughs> I would get I would get her to talk about what she learned in church. Something that she, something that you know should be enjoy, enjoy talking about. You know, something that she might enjoy talking about around the scriptures or what Pastor said. You know, and then you can expound on that with her, and that'll probably go a, a very long um, compared to you bringing out what we doing here. bring out what she she already know. I already know that. When people say I already know that, a lot of times it's because they're defensive because of either how you came out <laughs> or what you said, you know. So like what Shimmy I was saying earlier about the tone and stuff, you know how one of the thermos stats, oh I don't know if I said it right. But you know one of those things. <laughs> defensive man when you come out of that's why she said I already know that so um, 
I think it'll probably be best, at least for right now, to not come at her on that, on that until you can kind of really um, fill out her temperature on how to approach it without getting defensive. Now maybe if we break it up. Hey, you know, I know that we got kind of defensive when we... But now they're going to be like, no, I'm not defensive. What you talking about? No. Yeah. 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 She said defensive. But, yeah, so that, might not, that might not work. But um, I'm just saying, they had a conversation to be like, it might be worth having a conversation to be like, man, you know, um, you know, I just like to talk about the most high, you know, I, I don't want you to. You know, get offended or get defensive or maybe offended, I don't know. Then try to uh, see if we can get her talking on maybe on what she likes to talk about regarding the scriptures. So yeah. Just have a casual conversation with her. And say, hey, how was church today? What y'all talked about? What y'all did? And um, just kind of let her comfortably talk about, you know, even if it's <laughs> but it's just about her feeling comfortable to talk about it without you coming against, you know, everything that she, you know, believes. Um, you just have to be patient with her in that, and maybe instead of, you know, uh, coming against, maybe like. He said, it's found on it and through the way of asking the question. But have you, have you ever looked at this like this? You know, in that way. And then she was like, yeah, I know. Well, you know, I'll challenge you to study that out, you know, or something like that. Um, and just kind of leave it there. Don't, uh, you know, don't push her. Don't push it on her. Yeah, let me say this last thing real quick, though, because we'll, I just want to say this last thing because it's important. I don't think words are going to work with her. So, showing her, look at this in the scriptures. Um, let me explain to you how the Torah, who's rule to rule, it is not the world. It's, it's not going to work, man. She's like, it's all emotions and it's all, you know, you're talking about, man, you know, y'all are elders, man. You're talking about she probably 50 plus years or whatever in the church or maybe longer than that. So it's all, it's above and beyond any kind of words. Um, so it's more just showing her love, letting her talk, um, and kind of making her feel like, you know, she's being valued and see if, you know, just through your love and, and action, that it's gonna pull her to being a little more curious to try to get her to at least visit. Hey, you know, I just want you to come, you know, just come with me one day, just check it out. No, no, you, you know, church, you still go to church tomorrow, you know, man, man, you know, way of church, come on. You know. <laughs> but anyway, hallelujah. Um, just one thing, just, just one thing, like when you, another thing to look at is like when you look at the, the journey of Yahushua, like, Think about it. How many how many of his disciples did he gain by saying, let's sit down and have this Bible study? Let's sit down and read through Isaiah. The way that he gained his disciples was by saying, hey, you, follow me. And then at the end of that, he said, no longer do I call you servants, but friends. Like it takes, and that was a three-year journey to get from, hey, you follow me to, hey, you're my friend. Because a servant doesn't know what his master does. But I have revealed things to you, therefore I call you friends. So it really is a, hey, come follow me as I do this thing. Like that goes back to what you're saying, but it ain't just words. Like Yahushua did not impress none of the disciples because he could quote Yeshayahu in Hebrew and break down the understanding of Deuteronomy 21. Now he just said, hey, you, come follow me. <laughs> yeah, that's good advice, good advice. It's kind of like we talked about before, you know, when you uh, first come into the truth, you know, it's, it's a sweet taste in your mouth, you know. Because, you know, you're excited, you know, we're the people, you know, uh, you know we, we've been taught wrong. But, uh, you know, if you find out the truth and you try to, for the people you try to go to is your family members, you know, and, you know, let your, let your light shine on them. And then when they start shining you, you know, when they start kind of 
shying away from it, you know, it, it, it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. So that was a bitter taste for me, you know. I couldn't understand why, you know, that was just kept on over my head, you know. You know, after, you know, uh, you know, I've been in the tooth so long. But anyway, when, when I first came into the tooth, I think to come on kind of strong, you know, because I was excited about, you know, about her coming into the tooth with me, you know. I know that. And uh, she just, you know, she would listen, but then she kind of like she would get annoyed, you know. She would get annoyed and like she didn't want to, she didn't want to hear, you know. And I, I kept trying to throw nuggets out there. I kept trying to throw nuggets out there. And she said, why, why do you keep talking about that all the time, you know? We all, you know, so it really, it really hurt my feelings, you know. She really hurt my feelings pretty bad. So I, I kind of backed up a little bit, but. Uh, I understand about the discipleship now, you know, like you said, it's all about, you know, leading by example. Man, I got to be, a, be the thermostat. I got, I got to maintain that, that temperature, you know, because I know, you know, females, they're going to go up and down, you know. And she can definitely, you know, she can definitely feel my, like, with the real, you know, deal you talk about. She can definitely feel, you know, how I'm feeling, you know. She can reflect, you know, what I need, and, you know, but, before I even ask it, you know, so, you know, total for that, uh, for, for total teaching on the lesson, man, I really appreciate it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And what you can do in the meantime, I, I probably wouldn't even bring it, bring, bring that stuff up to her anymore for right now. But follow the, follow the, uh, the aspects of the Torah that Yerusha would call weightier things. Follow that to the T. Like, Love, loving, loving her like how much she I love the assembly. Um, really, you know, putting her before yourself as much as you can. Um, doing away with understanding all those aspects of it. That's all Torah too, you know what I'm saying? So really moving at it the best you can. And with prayer, you never know, man. You know, the other stuff can come. But I probably wouldn't bring that up. Uh, her anymore for right now. Uh, just moving her in love as much as possible. But man, 